let's talk about rapport. The reason rapport is important is that ultimately this job is about people. In fact, all business is, at the end of the day, it's really about people. In Vector, we talk about the three Ps, programs, products, and people. Now, the Cutco product, as we've seen, is basically invincible. It's, 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 what I mean is not that it's, it's an indestructible thing, because we know that it's not. But what I mean is that there's nothing that really could be done to make the Cutco product better than it is. I mean, it's guaranteed forever. It's American-made. The product is just magnificent. We've had the same design for decades, and we've been extremely successful with it. The Vector programs, the District Manager program, the FSM program, the CSP program, the Vector programs are awesome, and they're constantly being improved, which is, of course, very exciting. But with a product that really can't be improved very much, and with the amazing programs that we have, the fast start and what we do for FSMs and the type of rewards that our managers get, the other really big variable is people. And rapport is about relating to people. Have you ever been in a situation where you gave a waiter or waitress a larger tip because you liked them? And I don't mean because you were attracted to them, but because you just felt like they had something that you felt connected to. That's what rapport is about. And it's not about being manipulative. It's not about pretending to be someone you're not so that customers will like you. In fact, it's about the opposite. Because if you do that, if you try to become someone else, then you actually break rapport because people can feel a lack of authenticity. So what you want to do is you want to be yourself, but you want to be the best version of yourself. When you're with customers, you want to think of those customers like someone who's 10, 20, maybe 30 years older than you. Think of someone you know who's a married homeowner over the age of 30 that you're close with. Maybe that's your parents. Maybe it's an aunt or uncle. Maybe it's a high school gym coach. Maybe it's one of your professors. Maybe it's one of your friend's parents. But think of someone who's in that age bracket that you're comfortable being around. Someone that you can really be yourself around. But also someone who, when you're around them, you step, you step up your game a little bit. You step up who you are. You're, you're more polite than you might be just around your friends. You're someone who makes you want to be the best version of yourself. But if you don't have someone like that in your life, then just think of your customers in that way. Building rapport starts with one thing, caring about and being interested in people. It's about respecting the person that you're talking to. Now, what does respect mean? I, I actually looked it up. The dictionary says it means esteem for a sense of the worth or excellence of a person. In other words, it's the value that you place on who this person is. And we should all do that. Because, I mean, if you're religious, this person is created in the image of God, even if you don't know them. If you're not religious, this person is a product of millions of years of evolution that has created this race that has completely dominated the planet. And I'm not saying that those are mutually exclusive, but that's not what this is about. The point is, we should value people just because they're people. In fact, they've done studies on happiness and trying to correlate, in other words, trying to draw a relationship between being happy and between all sorts of other factors like, like race and income level and what part of the United States you live in and whether or not you're religious and whether or not you're married and all sorts of different things. And the number one thing that they've found that makes the biggest impact on relationships, it's not money, it's not race. It's not any of those other things. The number one thing is relationships. How many friends a person says they have, how many friends a person believes they have, and how deep a person believes their friendships are. And not only that, but you should care about your customers because we need to be grateful and appreciative of the fact that they're spending time with us. They're taking time out of their schedule to help us out. and and. This is easy to remember when, when we're in the fast start. When you're in the fast start, it's easy to remember, wow, this person took time out for me. But sometimes we get to that place where it's just like we expect that everyone we meet is supposed to take time out for us. And we get somehow get angry if, you know, if someone says over the phone that, that they don't have that time. And obviously we've talked about how to, how to handle phone objections. But just remember that there's a need for gratitude. 
These people are taking time out of their schedule to help you out. Whether or not they buy, they spend something with you that's far harder to replace than any money. You can always get your money back. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. And that's what they're ultimately spending with you. And that's one of the reasons we want to be grateful. We want to care about them. It's just the right thing to do. So in general, your stance towards your customers should be one of caring and gratitude. Remember that next time something doesn't go your way with a customer. Gratitude is a powerful antidote to all sorts of negativity, to anger, to frustration, depression, worry, anxiety. So just like everything else in Cutco and Vector, this isn't just about knives. It isn't just about a job or even about money. It's about the quality of life that you live. How you treat people is key. Oh, and you do sell more when you care and when you build rapport. So how do you build rapport? How do you show people that you're interested and that you care without being, you know, weird? Well, first off, you want to realize that rapport is a process. Rapport starts when you get the lead. Ask about the leads that you're getting. And we'll talk about this in the next section when we talk about leads. We'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. And I know we mentioned this when we talked about phone time. But in addition to the regular qualifying questions that I'm going to give you when we talk about leads, ask them, you know, when they give you that great lead, when they have the, those top three leads that they give you or the top five or the very best ones, just ask them, what can you tell me about this person? What makes her unique? And then start getting excited about getting to know these people. Now, the next place that rapport happens is, of course, on the phone, which we've talked about. And more important than building rapport over the phone is just sticking to the fundamentals of the phone approach. But really, ultimately, once you're on the appointment, and of course over the phone and just everywhere else that you go, rapport is about questions and more questions. Now, you can ask rapport questions that are directed to help you generate leads. Things like, how long have you lived in this neighborhood? This is a really nice house. How long have you lived here? What's the neighborhood like? Do you know the neighbors at all? If you meet one of their children, ask if they have others. And then ask follow-up questions. Oh, so this is Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Is Johnny your only son? What's it like being a mom? What's your favorite thing about being a mom? Or you ask them how long they lived there. Do you like living here? What's your favorite thing about living here? Questions can also be directed around what we call the four P's. Plants, pets, pictures, and hobbies. Now, I know a hobby doesn't start with a P, but we just call it the four P's anyway. Look around the house. Do you see any pets? Do you see any plants? Do you see that they have a uniquely meticulous nice yard? Ask if they have any hobbies. What, did, what do you do for fun? Look at the different pictures on the wall. Ask them about the pictures. Oh, is that you? Is this, are you guys skiing? Is that, is that Colorado or wh where are you guys? Do you guys go on lots of vacations? What's the best vacation you've ever been on? You want to be more interested than you are interesting. Never one up someone. If they say they went on a vacation, they went skiing to New Mexico and you think that Colorado is a better destination for skiing, don't say, oh, well, we went to Colorado last year. That's extremely rude. Even if you, you get really excited about something like that. Be more interested in them than you're trying to make them interested in you. Smile. Smile when you're with your customers. Give a good, solid handshake. You want to give a solid handshake as well, nice and firm. Don't walk across their lawn if you can help it. Uh, try to use the path if there's a path. Try not to park in their driveway. Ideally, don't even park in the front because... Last thing you want is you're in the middle of a presentation and have you ever had it where you come home and someone's parked in your spot? It's totally annoying. In the middle of a presentation and uh, Mr. or Mrs. Jones comes home, you're parked in their spot, they don't know that you're there, they come in and like, who parked in my spot? And then you're sitting there in the middle of your presentation. When you go in, ask if you should take off your shoes. Occasionally there are people who have homes where they just don't wear shoes, especially if you see a little stack of shoes by the door. Now, there's two main ways to structure rapport in terms of where it goes in your appointment. You can put it at the very beginning, or you can just do rapport throughout. 
most reps are putting rapport, a rapport section at the beginning of the appointment. And if you can limit that to a few minutes, it's a good thing. I know some reps who get a little bit carried away end up having a 10, 15, even, God forbid, 20, 30 minute section at the beginning of their appointment where they're just doing nothing but talking to the customer. And while that's great that they're that you're enjoying talking to them and you're becoming friends with them, at the end of the day, when you're spending that much time just at the beginning, you haven't even gotten to the appointment yet, you're not respecting your customer's time. And that's really something that we want to do. So just a few minutes, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, just talking about a little bit about the plants, the people, the pictures. The other way to build rapport is to build rapport throughout the appointment. Now, you can do both of these. You can build it at the beginning and throughout the appointment. And that's really not hard at all. For example, when you start cutting food, you're getting out the celery that you brought or you're getting out the celery out of your customer's fridge. That's a great time to ask another question, either about the neighborhood or about the people or about the plants or about the pictures or about the dog. Now, just so you know, sometimes you have customers who really, really like to talk. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's usually a good thing. But in order to prevent your appointment from taking two hours or three hours, how do you interrupt someone without being rude? It's real simple. What you want to do is you just nod your head at what they're saying, and then you put something in their hand. This is especially works this works especially well with basically any section that's not the company page or the guarantee page. It works best at the parts uh, where you know you're actually doing names and uses and that type of thing. You're going over gifts and accessories. But you just nod your head and then you take your petite carver, take your shears, and you hand them to them. And especially if that's the first time that you've handed them that item. They're going to go, it's going to break their pattern. It's going to interrupt what they're saying. And they're going to go, oh, oh, well, what's this? I've done this over and over and over again, and it works very, very well if you do it right. The part of doing it right means you do actually care about the customer and you do want to hear their story. Time. But you also want to make sure that everybody's respecting everybody's time. So rapport really is a very, very simple skill set. It's just about caring about people and asking them questions. So I'm going to give you a real quick assignment. I want you to practice this on someone who's on at least three people who are new in the office the next time you go into the office. Think about them before you meet them. Make a decision in advance to care about who they are and to value who they are as a person. And go to the next team meeting and introduce yourself, shake their hand, give a nice firm handshake, smile, and just ask them a few questions about themselves. Where do you go to school? What neighborhood do you live in? What's your favorite thing about the job so far? Practice this. Because like any other skill set, it's one that will improve with practice. And you'll get better and better at building rapport. And you'll sell more and more. And you'll get more and more leads. Because both of those things are directly tied to the level of rapport that you build.